Hello, this is Steve from Vito's Leatherworks, and today's project is these cool Alden shell cordon boots. Now, you might be asking yourself, why are we working on a pair of brand new boots? Well, come closer and let me show you what we think is the issue. Now, if you look at the toe, the welt stitches are loose. Something definitely happened here that the manufacturer tried to hide and unfortunately they weren't very successful. If you look at the stitches on the bottom, you can tell that there's definitely some issue going on there that they try to fix. Weren't very successful. Let's take a look at the other one. Same way there. You see the stitch, those light color stitches? Those are the weld stitches. You're not really supposed to see those. Now, unfortunately, these came in well, fortunately, these came in for Lulu tips, okay? And upon inspection of it, there was no way I was going to touch these boots because what happens is that I'm working at the toes, putting the tips on. If something happens there while the customer's wearing it, I'm going to be blamed for it. Well, I can't have that. It's not my fault that came like this from the manufacturer. So what we're going to do to kind of try to fix a problem because I know something's going to go wrong at the toe area, especially on the left boot. We're going to take everything off. We're going to re-welt it, put leather midsoles. We're going to put a leather heel rand replacing the fiberboard. We're going to put JR soles, the Lulu tips. We're going to replace the fiberboard heel base. We're going to reuse the top lift on it. And then you're going to have a nice solid, solid boots, much, much better than what the manufacturer is putting out these days. It's a great boot. I'm, I'm not knocking the manufacturer, but unfortunately, there's issues like that. I'm not sure how that passes quality control, but but it did. So once it gets done, the customer will have these almost forever. It takes care of them. All right, let's get started. There goes nothing. Hey man, I can't believe you're tearing that brand new boot apart. Paper. Oh my god, it's paper. Okay, you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. Saturday today, so we are open for business, so that's why periodically you're going to hear that doorbell chime. Now, I didn't want to start this on a Saturday because I know I'm going to get interrupted, but just couldn't wait to tear these apart. This is the heel rand. When the welt is not all the way around back of the heel, you have a small piece of leather. You're supposed to have a small piece of leather as a heel rand. This is fiberboard paper. Let's continue. Now, one thing I, I do like um, that Alden does, which are these canvas covered on the footbeds. <clears throat> so let me let me explain to you what that does. Let me take this apart and I'll show you a little bit. Let's continue. Now, this is called the gemming, that canvas piece you're looking at. That's glued onto the footbed, and then the welt and the uppers are stitched to the gemming. Over time, if depending on how the customer wears it, 
the gimming comes loose from the footbed and it changes the size of the shoe. Now what Alden does, they, they put another piece of canvas right here, kind of bridging that to this. So if that ever comes loose, if the gimming comes loose a little bit, that canvas is kind of keeping that tight. It's not allowing the shape to change because the gimming came loose over time. Sometimes it does. It doesn't do it all the time, but you know, they're boots. If you abuse them, not abuse them, if you wear them like boots, not put them on the shelf to make them look good, eventually sometimes the gimming does come loose. So that's why in my past videos, at times when I've replaced the footbed with a new gimming, I've stitched the gimming on there so there's no there's no chance of that coming loose. Okay, so as you guys can see that the toe was I don't know what was going on. You know what? I'm just gonna call it like I see it. You know, good, bad, ugly, beautiful, it doesn't matter. So I like Alden. They're they're my I mean I wear them every day on my feet. I've got a bunch of pairs. But sometimes the quality control needs to get better. Sad to say. All right, let's continue. It's just to protect the uppers while I'm working on them. You never know. Not going to ruin an $800 pair of shoes. A lot of protecting the uppers while I do what I got to do. Oh, this is just uh, from like a department, the hardware store. This is for painters. They use that. It works out pretty good on, on shoes also. Let's continue. This is the welt that we use. Comes in a five, well, it, it's packaged in five yards, but you can get them a lot more than that. This just happens to be one of my older ones. Now, this is not the right size. This is very narrow. We need it a little bit wider. Just showing you guys that there, there's different kinds. Now, I know there's gonna be some questions saying that, well, why didn't you just restitch the toe and be done with it? That way you don't have to replace all the welt. There are a couple of spots along the way of the welt. The stitches are right next to the edge. There was no way I could have restitched that back together and salvaged that welt. So that's why I decided to take it all apart and re-welt it and do the whole thing all over again. So I hope that answers some of your questions. Now we just got to find the wider welt around here and start stitching. All right, let's continue. All right, we are making progress. So I couldn't find the width of welt I needed, so I made my own. Should be just fine. I'm not gonna bore you guys sitting here watching me welt this boot because it's gonna take me about I'd say maybe about a good 30 minutes or so. I'll show you guys a couple of uh, couple of close-up shots and we will be back when the full wealth is stitched on. But we're making some headway. Slowly but sure.
All right, so we've got our weld on. Now we get to make the heel rand. Now, this was the manufacturer's heel rand, okay? Which is not very good, unfortunately. We made one out of leather. And we're just going to basically shape that. The welt, the ends of the welt, and the heel rand are basically going to come on top of each other and then sand it like there's no seam there. So you skive one end from this side, you skive the other end. When you overlap each other, it's a nice, nice flawless look. Well, with the cork, shank, midsole, sole, heel base, heel top, and we are done with this project. All right, let's continue. You all know what time it is now. But this is just the midsole hammer time. The sole sole hammer time is coming a little later. Right, let's continue. Alright, you guys ready? Are you ready? I don't know why you guys like hammer time so much. Maybe because I like it? I don't know. Hammer time. <laughs> Maybe we should stop hammer time. Did I say that? This is my Rapid E machine. It's a beast. It stitches heavy soles. Now the needle broke. It happens sometimes. Okay, that's just part of the needle. Now it's kind of tricky. The other part is right in there. Let me see if I can show you. Right there. See that? shiny piece. Now in order to loosen the bolt that is holding that in there, it is, let's see if I can find it to show you guys. It's right in there. That's hard to see. Right there? No? Yeah, right in there. You see that? Once you loosen that up, you can get to the needle. So, I'm going to use a little tool, which is here somewhere. Let's see. I think it's on this machine here. Pretty much use the same, same tools. All right, let me show you guys, see how this thing works. There's an awl, which is, let's call that a knife. It pierces from the bottom to the welt of the shoe through the sole. 
and then the needle follows it. See that knife? That's the awl right there. See that coming up? Right there. Once it pierces through the sole, it lines it up with the needle. Needle follows it. Needle follows it and catches the thread. Comes up. And you got a loop. This right here is the guide. If you've got a, if you want a deeper stitch, that's just basically the guide that is on the side of the welt that hits the hits the welt, so you can keep the same distance from the edge to the stitch hole there. All right, all right, there goes nothing. So cut the bottom thread. So we know that there's something not lined up. We're gonna give it another try. Sometimes I don't pull the thread out long enough to lube it because the thread goes through a lubrication pot. And um, if it's been sitting about a foot, foot and a half, it's not lubed, and we try to stitch it, it will break so let's hope that's the only issue and not needs adjustments let's give another try all right so no issues i just realized that i had to cut away for the lulu tip i i don't know just hit me that i just remembered all right let's not too bad i mean it wouldn't have been end of the world had i stitched it because on the new boots we have to cut the stitches and then we put a little bit of glue where we cut the threads I'd rather have it this way, obviously. You know, I think it's much more neater this way, cleaner. I think it did pretty good. All right, let's continue. Now sometimes uh, I get a question asked that when I'm nailing these, how come, how come it doesn't hurt the foot on the inside when, when you wear it? So if you look inside, when the nail comes through, it hits the last and it cinches it down. So there's no way of that nail poking through. Besides, on top of those nails, we put the uh, heel lining, sock lining, to kind of protect the foot. That's what that's for. That metal lasts. It hits it and it bends and it secures that to the footbed. Let's continue. This is a attachment for the edge burnishing. Now this needs to heat up so we can put wax on it. When we do this here, it pushes the leather washer against the wheel which heats that up, and then when we put wax on it, we'll burnish the edges of the soles. Now, most of the time, what people will do, they'll sand the edges of the soles, and there's no there's no lip at the end. Okay. Most of the soles I do, I use a trimmer blade. There's 16 blades there. Basically, we just trim the edges with this, 
and then we'll come here and burnish it. This burnishing wheel has the same pattern as the trimmer. So when we go ahead, when it warms up, we put the wax on it. We'll burnish the edge. So it looks like nice and smooth. See that little lip at the edge? I think that makes it look really cool. All right, let's continue. bent. I can't I couldn't countersink it because it bent. These are a pain in the butt to remove once they're in there. Okay, let's try it again. All right, welcome back. We are done with another project. So as you can see, it turned out pretty good. I think the customer will be very happy. Now, I know some of you guys are gonna ask, well, why didn't the customer return it back to the manufacturer? Well, the problem is that, you know, not having the right size, the color available, um, I reached out to the retailer and the retailer and I agreed that what would be best in this situation to have the soles replaced, make sure that's structurally sound, so the customer can wear them for many years to come. Now, the customer's got a new JR Soles, um, leather heel base, leather heel rand. Um, I think that overall, it's structurally so much better than what it was. Now, they came to me with a job for Lulu Tips and I reached out to the customer and I notified them that it might be a potential issue, found out who the retailer was, and I contacted the retailer, said, you know what, this is the issue. I'm not comfortable with doing this job because 
in case something happens, then it comes back to me because I worked on that area. So we came to an understanding that, you know, in this situation, it might not be a bad idea to just get a redone and, um, and make the customer happy. And I think it turned out pretty good. All right, so if you guys haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, thumbs up, um, share, comment, whatever you guys want to do would be greatly appreciated to kind of move the channel a little bit forward. And um, any comments, negative, positive, all right, I'll take it all, no problem. All right, thanks again, and we'll see you guys on the next project. Take care.